Okay, I want to show you how to read a dial indicator and you probably need to know some of the parts so you understand what I'm talking about when I'm showing you how to read it. So just want to run through the parts real quick. Um, first thing is this big round thing with all the numbers on it that's uh, called a dial. Uh, part of the dial is this outer part that's got the numbers and that can rotate usually. So that's called a bezel and usually there's a little thumb screw up here to lock the bezel. Uh, <clears throat> this is the needle. Some people call it the indicator. It's also called the longhand needle. Um, this is called the shorthand needle. And uh, this counts revolutions of the longhand needle or the indicator needle. So if this needle goes around once, this will move over to one. If this goes around twice, this is going to move to two. If this goes around two and a half times and stops at 50, uh, it would be kind of halfway between two and three. So, um, the other part is the stem down here. The stem is what oftentimes is used to clamp the dial indicator in a holder. Uh, this is the spindle. The spindle actually raises up and down. Some people call it the plunger. You can see it moves up and down. Uh, this bottom point usually screws off and it's called the contact point. And there's a variety of different points you can put on it. Uh, one that we use has a roller uh, for run out. But uh, be careful not to lose the one you unscrew when you put one of those on there. Now let's get down to reading. Uh, the dial up here, and specifically the bezel, which is this outer part, <clears throat> the bezel's graduated. And if you see each one of these little marks, that's one thousandths. That's two thousandths, three thousandths, four thousandths, five, all the way to ten thousandths, twenty thousandths, thirty thousandths, forty thousandths. So if I was right at this mark with my needle, Right there, that would be 45 thousandths. That would be 44, 42, 40, 38. You can see how when the needle moves, uh, it lines up with one of those. If it's halfway in between, it, you can kind of round up or round down usually. Okay, And you'll notice the shorthand up there is a little past zero because we haven't gone a full revolution. So this one only goes a little over one revolution, so I'm going to show it to you. It goes around. See how the shorthand's getting close to one? As I reach the top, it is on one, and then as I go past it, see how it goes past one. If I could push this all the way around to two, uh, it would read two, and then three, and then four. Basically, it would have an inch of travel. Uh, this one's just for... Uh, kind of example purposes so it doesn't go around more than once. Okay. So this long hand is what we're going to be looking at and we're also going to occasionally look at this. If I'm just making short movements or it's moving up and down or I don't push it in very much, that is going to be uh, uh, this one really isn't necessary because we're not going over one. But if I go a full revolution, like I did just then, I need to look up there and see how many revolutions I got, I've got. gone. I could have gone four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Um, and just think of these as, uh, these are thousandths. Think of these as tenths of an inch. So this would be one hundred thousandths. This would be... Two hundred thousandths, three hundred thousandths, four hundred thousandths, five hundred thousandths, six hundred thousandths, seven hundred thousandths, eight hundred thousandths, nine hundred thousandths. So basically, what you do is these are hundred thousandths, and if you watch the screen down here, it shows the reading. That's ten. If you go right there, we have uh, we're past the ten thousandths. Look at how that's written down at the bottom. We're three marks past ten, that would be thirteen thousandths. Pay attention to how that's written. You'll have to write that in uh, the numbers into some of your questions. 
and make sure you do not put letters in when you're answering my questions. So if we keep going, uh, we pass almost to 20 thousandths. That's 19 thousandths. Okay. I'm going to show you how to read it with the when we go past zero. Okay. Say we're right there. That's five thousandths. But we have to look at our dial and see how many hundreds to put on it. So notice we have a hundred plus five thousandths. So look at the number at the bottom of the screen. Uh, 105 thousandths is what that is of an inch, uh, which is different from this being in the same position, which is only 5 thousandths of an inch. You look at the dial, and it's on zero up here, the shorthand, and it's on zero. So we don't add any hundredths for the first revolution. It's all 14, 15, 14, 15, you can kind of count. As it goes up, then when we hit a revolution, one revolution, you can look and we're going to have to add the one. You can see there's 112,000, so we added 100 to the 12. So it's pretty simple to use, it's pretty simple to read. Uh, most people get messed up with the shorthand looking at it and don't realize that it's on four here, so they'll forget. They'll have it on 30 thousandths and they'll put 30 thousandths and not realize it was past the 4 so it's 430 thousandths or past the 7 so it's 730 thousandths. The only other thing to tell you is this uh, bezel rotates you can turn it there's usually a lock screw holding it on it uh, over here kind of at the 1 o'clock 2 o'clock position. You unscrew that bezel or bezel tightening clamp and you can rotate this dial. Uh, you do that because you want it zeroed out. So when I mash this on and put it on something, I'm at say 41, I want to loosen that clamp and rotate the zero so the zero is down here where my long hand is. So it's just a way of calibrating it or changing the calibration or setting it to zero uh, so you can start at zero. You don't have to do that but it really makes it easy because um, if not you put it on a piece and we're setting it 49 already that should be zero so if it goes up to here that would be six thousandths of movement because we went from because we went from 49 to 55 so you can do the math without zeroing it and figure out how much it moved that's fine um, you don't have to rotate the bezel as long as you can keep up with it. If you're going more than revol one revolution, it really is best to zero it out. And that's about all I can tell you about the dial indicators.